I can't wait to hear about this one, actually. 9-15, 9-16, good pitching matchup here. Sonny Gray for the Twins. Logan Gilbert, Corby's boy for the Mariners. Minus 135 to Seattle, plus 125 to the Twins. Total of seven, a low total. Some juice to the over at minus 125. B-Dub, I thought this one was tough. When I look at this game, the first thing that pops in my brain is strikeout props, strikeout props, strikeout props. Both these teams strike out a ton. But I think both pitchers here line up. It's the lowest weighted OPS I have on the card combined. 580 uh, for Logan Gilbert, 604 for Sony Gray. Uh, tough one here for me. What are your thoughts? What's the model say? Twins at Mariners. You know, I, my number likes, uh, and I'm interested to, to to get Corby's take on Logan Gilbert because I know you had a bone to pick with Corby about Logan Gilbert oh. on another show, and he wasn't on the show. So, like, I'll let you guys hash that out. I'll just let me give you my numbers for it real fast. I've got uh, I got Seattle minus 198. They're in the market at minus 133. I, I don't I see that as a really good opportunity to put it in a parlay. Uh, which I did. And you could also you could say this is a Huey Lewis parlay, Seattle, San Francisco, too. Or you could say it's the Logan parlay because I got two Logans on it. Oh. Um, but which is interesting because I, I, I loved uh, the HBO series Succession. But I, w- I would say that that Logan Roy was was my least favorite sibling in, in that mm. in that series. So, you know, I don't really have Call an opinion, I guess. Well, no, I know. I don't. That sounds I get, tough. Yeah, Logan from yeah. X Men. Come on, that's the, the. There you go. Yeah, I yeah. like that. Bring it over to more parlay. action. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You yeah. Can, you so can the... do it. You, you can do it. Um, you know yeah. the main. Okay, so so here's here's the thing with these offenses. They they both strike out a lot. You you look yeah. at Minnesota. They're they're thirtieth versus right-handed pitching. Twenty-nine point two percent strikeout rate aggregated by lineup. And then they're 27th versus left-handed pitching. Seattle, 22nd versus right-handed pitching, 28th versus left-handed pitching. And but the difference for me is is their ISO power numbers. This looks at, at the last 500 plate appearances, which I think is a decent way to look at it, uh, aggregated by batter. And and Minnesota overall is 17th, where Seattle is sixth. So there's a there's a big difference there in, in the power numbers, at least that I use. Uh, also, for me, this I think this Seattle bullpen is is kind of uh, I don't know. I think maybe people are sleeping on it. I, I know for me, they they weren't. They had a couple injuries earlier in the season, so their rank for me was like down towards the bottom. And I and I said that on the show, and I was like, every time I looked at it, I'd, I'd have to double check my numbers. But there was Munoz was out. They had a couple other injuries out. But now the way it's it's comprised, second in baseball, guys. So if if we can get to the late innings. I like I like the Mariners' chances here. Put it in the back end of the parlay. It pays about two to one. Uh, Frisco and uh, oh, they, people hate it when you say Frisco. They 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 just can't stand that. That's that's like sacrilegious. So I'll say you know what they'd like to do in the Bay Area. They like to call San Francisco the city. It's a city. It's not the city. But I'll put yeah, the, city the city and, and I'll put I, the city and Seattle in the parlay, and it pays two to one if it hits. That's that's my best play of the day, guys. Yeah, okay. So a couple things here as we kick it over to Corby. Number one, just for you Tigers backers again, let me say, and Mo Harris nails it in the chat box. Jordan Lyle's not bad looking either. I looked that up while base was talking. He's not, not a bad looking guy. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, maybe, maybe hug him close or something. I don't know. But Jordan Lyle's not terrible looking. So let's just send that up into the universe. Uh, so he pitches poorly today. Number two, this Logan Gilbert guy. Okay. I know Corby loves Logan Gilbert. So I back this SOB, right? And he goes out and pitches like hell, can't locate anything. I'm like, why do I'm watching this guy pitch? I'm like, this guy is terrible. So then I bag on him. He comes out in his next performance, throws a no a shutout and a nine inning shutout. Looks like he's, you know, Greg Maddox reincarnated. So I don't know what the hell to do with this guy. I just know that I'm kind of pissed off at him and I, I don't want to back him. I don't want to bet against him. What do you got here? Mariners twins, Corby. Yeah, I was looking at his game log to try to figure. I, I knew you had to bet against him. I mean, bet on him at some point. You had to have, like, just based off the conversation. So I was trying to figure out what game. And there are two that I had circled. If you look at every other game he's pitched all year, he's been a pretty good pitcher. And then I was like, all right. He, either backed, him. Him, he either backed him against the Angels on the 11th, where he gave up eight, eight hits in three innings, or he backed him against the Nationals, where he gave up eight hits in six innings. So, um, yeah, the interesting thing about Logan Gilbert is – I like his like makeup. I, I like what he brings to the table. The issue is, uh, I'll be the first one to say, like I, I'm one of the bigger Logan Gilbert fans, but his fastball's velocity has fallen off a cliff. Like I don't know if he's hurt, um, 
but it was it was pushing 98 last year he threw a couple at 98 early this year and it's fallen all the way down to 95 which doesn't seem crazy but his slider is 89 so like you're you're only a six mile per hour velo difference and and when that was 10 i really liked him but at six like people get lucky a lot his four seam hasn't really done good a 262 expected batting average the main thing for logan gilbert which is always going to make him tough also with sony gray here and i think both strikeout props are probably in question like i mean in a good spot because Logan Gilbert throws a splitter, uh, a ball that people just don't see a ton, and it has a 161 expected batting average. It is his put-away pitch 25% of the time and has a 40% strikeout rate. So by all means, that's a really good pitch, uh, but I will not bag Sony Gray at all. I think Sony Gray, uh, I, I've talked about on the show a million times, my ideal pitcher is like 6'6 six, six to 6'8, six, uh, really long like arm extension and throws the ball hard. Sony Gray is the exact opposite of all of that. He's 5'10, he doesn't have much arm extension and does not throw the ball very hard, but he is an animal. I mean, he throws six pitches all basically even in, in reps all with complete confirmation that he is a good pitcher. And, and the sweeper is at a 50% stri- strikeout rate. So Tony Gray strikeout props, I think are probably the way in this uh, can Seattle get to him by all means. They probably have the chance in the later innings, but his sweeper is, is pretty dirty. So uh, five and a half, I think I saw was the strikeout prop. So I would lean towards the over there. Yeah, I, I would look at strikeout props, and I mean, Corby described his ideal pitcher. That's my ideal man. I mean, he just nailed it for me right there. If you watch my OnlyFans page, you know that's that's what I go for there. Uh, for purposes of this show, we're back in Logan Gilbert here as part of the base winner parlay. Giants Mariners parlay plus one ninety seven. Good number there on two teams favored today. Both teams have good pitchers on the mound. Could do a whole lot worse than plus one one ninety seven on the base winner parlay. 